Welcome to Conversations in Black, African American History and Heritage, Greensboro, North Carolina. Here folks tell their story from their perspective, dealing with genealogy, childhood, neighborhood, segregation, parenting, and stories about life in Greensboro. It's a beautiful morning in Greensboro, North Carolina, one of the finest cities in the whole United States. Is that right, Shirley? That's right. Mm -hmm. Well, my name is Henry Fry, Henry E. Fry for initial, or Henry L. Fry, not the uh, not the word, not, not the L, but the E-L-L fry. Uh, I don't usually write it out, but uh, uh, if you want to get into it, I have two or three ways to, uh, to write, uh, write my name. Well, there were 11 siblings, uh, I guess, other than me. Six girls and six boys. My father said, uh, cheaper by the dozen. And did he own his land? Uh, eventually, yes. Uh, he took a long time to buy it, of course, uh, because they were not they were not rich people or anything. So uh, he would uh, he, he he borrowed it, borrowed money, rented it, and and eventually got to the place he was able to to pay it off. Uh, the last money, and by that time I was uh, at a place where I could help a little bit uh, with uh, with with paying it off the the final debt. So it was home free. We went barefooted a lot, but uh, and and I remember one of the things I remember was when it's getting time for school to start, and usually by that time whatever shoes we had were worn out. <laughs> so. Uh, Probably on the Saturday before the day for school opening, uh, my mother or, 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 or father or both would take us to town to, to buy shoes and, and whatever clothes we needed in order to start uh, when, when school opened. And of course that was, that was a happy time. Let me go back and remind you that that was during the days of so-called separate but equal. Uh, a lot of us called it separate but unequal. <laughs> so you had the white school and the black school. And um, I, I think they called the LB High School the white one, and, L and uh, uh, ours was LB Colored High School. Now there was other names, LB Negro High School, uh, and uh, another one, which was Mineral Springs School, so uh, had different different schools, and uh, one, uh, one I'll go ahead and mention one of the things that uh, uh, still sticks in my mind that uh, we walked to school, uh, I guess a little over a mile or so, and we had dirt roads at that time, and when it was raining. Uh, the school bus would be coming down that dirt road, and if we were walking along on the side, if you don't get out, didn't get out of the way, the bus is not going to hit you. But if it been, had been raining, it would splash water on you. And I remember one day it, it, it did and splashed that water, and I had to go go back home and, and change clothes because it was wet, everything with it. But those were the days of uh, so-called separate. Uh, but equal, they rode the bus past our house, right by our house, going to school. But they didn't stop uh, at the colored place. Uh, they, they were coming from other parts of the of the uh, of the county. Uh, so that's a memory that's stuck in my mind uh, and still there at times. Well, uh, one specific thing that stuck in my mind, uh, the, the, uh, the 
with the chairs that we sat in at school. Uh, they were old and in fact they were handed down from the white schools. In other words, when new schools came, not new schools, when new furniture came, uh, they would take it to the white school and the white school would, we would, we would get the, uh, uh, that furniture uh, and, and I, that, I didn't like that. <laughs> I'll just put it as a model. That was one of the things that I observed and I figured that, you know, sometime we ought to get some something new. And the same thing with the school buses. The, the, the school buses, and, and I drove a school bus for a while, uh, but uh, the, the, when a new uh, school bus came, they, they would send it to the white school and, and send the old one to the black school. Oh yeah, yeah, well, uh, I, uh, it's, it's, as soon as I got old enough, uh, I got driver's license and uh, I worked with my daddy. Uh, I drove the truck with my daddy and works. I mean, dad, my daddy, I told you we had 12, 12 children, so uh, we, 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 we needed and as soon as he got to the age where you could get license, driver's license, I got, he got mine, and I was driving the truck with lumber and uh, uh, slabs, uh, watermelons, and we'd drive to Camda, Canada, and sell watermelons and things, and uh, we would, I would drive uh, at the Various, various other places and things. Well, I, <laughs> uh, I was either 16 or 15, and I'm not going to tell you which one. <laughs> you had to be 16 in order to get the driver's license. I think I, I think I got them a year before I was entitled to to, to get it. Yeah. My daddy took me down to get it, and and uh, he told them how old I was. <laughs> so we got. So I was driving. I was a young boy driving big time uh, with the truck and and I, let me mention something that, that uh, was interesting uh, uh, my daddy operated a sawmill for a good while he was the person who got the people to go who were going to work there and drove and so forth and and so as soon as I was, had my license I was driving people to back and forth for things and and going to the uh, uh, sawmill to pick up things and for slabs and 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 and, uh, uh, and lumber and uh, the uh, I was I mean I I enjoyed it uh, I worked around the uh, uh, the sawmill my my daddy said I was slow uh, <laughs> uh, with it and. Uh, he, he, he had me working right at the mill where they cut the, uh, I forgot what he, I can't even think of what slabs. it is. The slabs, right, and everything with it. And he said that uh, he didn't have a problem, I was slow, but I didn't have a problem because when they were cutting it, if it didn't, if I didn't take it off, you know, it would, the whole mill would have to stop. So uh, that caused me to get a little more into it. Uh, I, at first, I was a little slow about a lot of things, but uh, well, uh, we also had at home a a, a little. There was a, a little. I forgot what you call it now, but anyway, where we cut wood uh, for fireplaces, and then we would haul the to various places. In school, including the school, by the way, and I, I think my daddy gave the the wood that for the fire to the school. And I don't know that he ever charged anything for it, but but we we did we would cut that and take that and so forth. And so this is the one that we had at home. Uh, I, I would be at the end where the saw would it would cut it off, and it, and it would drop. And I'm standing there, so I, I can't let it drop because if I drop, it may hit my foot. 
So that's, Daddy said, that's the only time that I really got in a hurry. <laughs> uh, he said I was a little slow about hard work, you know. And, and uh, he said, hey, that boy better go to school so, <laughs> so he could, you know, learn to do something else other than this kind of work. And I didn't say, yes, sir, Daddy, I agree with you. Well, first of all, I didn't think I was slow. It was my daddy talking about me being slow, you know, and 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 and, and I was. Uh, 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 I sent me out to work to do something in the field and everything, and uh, uh, I wasn't I wasn't too good. For, let, let me take an example of, of picking cotton. I, I didn't like picking cotton, and uh, uh, I would be out there working and. I might come up with 80 pounds, and, and uh, some of the others would have 100 pounds, and my mother would have 120 pounds, and that type thing. Uh, so my daddy said, that, that boy better go to school because uh, he can't make a living out here on the farm. Uh, but at uh, any rate, I'm, these are things I think about every now and then. <laughs> I was thinking of ways to get an education and do something else other than working and sweating uh, out in the, you see, I haven't even mentioned the tobacco yet, have I? Tobacco, uh, there, there are several things, and I'll just mention one. There's, there's such a thing as topping tobacco. You go through and cut and, and cut or break the tops. That's, that's one thing. That's, I didn't mind that. But then there were things that they called suckers that came out from the tobacco. And you, if you had, you had to break that, break it at certain levels, and, and it had gum on it. And it would get stuck into your arms and legs where there's any, any, sa any, any, uh, sap. Huh? Sap. Yeah, it was sap and stick into your arms and everything. And, you talk about a person daydreaming. <laughs> I said, <laughs> well, you know, uh, I don't even have to repeat it. The rest of it is that as, as soon as I can, I'm gonna get an education so I can. I don't have to make my living suckering in, suckering in tobacco. I didn't mind breaking the tops out, but when you got them going around there breaking that stuff and it sticking into your arm and hot and sweaty, and I, I didn't like that. Also, the experience of picking cotton. Oh, Lord have mercy. That's, that's worse, almost. Now, I won't say it's worse, but picking cotton, you, you, you bend down uh, until they came along with, with cotton picking machines, you know. You had to go out there and pick it, and it, it, it was in the summer, of course, uh, early fall, and uh, you. Uh, it was hard work, it was sweaty work, and uh, my, uh, I'll have to mention this before I forget it. Uh, we were, I was asking Daddy, I said, Daddy, what time, is t isn't it time for us to, you know, quit and everything? He said, we work from Kent to Kent. You can't see when you start in the morning, and you can't see when you stop at night. He said, let's keep on working. And I said to myself, I'm going to do something because I don't want to have to have this kind of working and everything with it. How about um, your meals while you were working? How did you get your food? Well, uh, first of all, uh, as I told you, we were a big family. And, and my daughter, <coughs> uh, not only uh, had far farming stuff of our own, land of our own, we were farming other things too. So he would always hire people to help with some of the work wherever it was. And uh, so, and, and a lot of times I was the one who, who carried the f food, you know, and with it. Uh, so that was not a problem, you know. We, we had, we, we never, had to worry about being able to eat. Now, it might be 
we we had to wait a little bit sometimes. You know, we would, we 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 want to eat at six o'clock, and and if the sun's still shining, uh, my daddy said, "Well, we got another half hour of daylight. Let's do this," and that's what we did. How about lunch? Did you have a lunch? Meal? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We we uh, but, but we usually. I was I was trying to think and remember I think this is correct that it was usually after twelve. In other words, not early. You know, we you would start out early in the morning working, but it would be probably one o'clock or something before we actually had uh, lunch. Did you go home to eat lunch? Well, most of the time, yes, because that's some we were somewhere around our our area. But when we were somewhere else, we'd fix lunch and take it with us and be ready to go when uh, uh, time come for lunch. Uh, and uh, I think generally we had a pretty good edu education uh, system for learning. And, and the reason I think is that number one, we had a principal who was, as, I don't know how to, uh, what words to use, he was a guy who was very smart in terms of getting things that we should get. And he was able to get some good teachers uh, who were well prepared and so forth. And uh, he, pushed for things, and he was very smart in dealing with the superintendent of, of uh, schools, who was white, uh, and uh, I don't want to say too much, but uh, he, he, he would meet with the superintendent, and he would have a list of things that he wanted done. And uh, and he uh, he said that I'm gonna put it in his words, talking to me. I'm talking now about the, the principal. Uh, we had nice talks after he retired and everything with him. And he said he would, when he would go to the superintendent, uh, he would have a list, and <laughs> he wouldn't give it to <laughs> he wouldn't give it to the superintendent. He would hold it like this, and then and then and say, "Now uh, I have five five things here," and he would go over it and everything, and say, "The the, the, the guy would would listen to him because he wanted to hear <laughs> everything you know that it was, but he, he never would he never would give him the thing, and he he was able to get a lot of things uh, done, and he had some he found some good teachers, and." Uh, uh, teachers who cared. Now, not all of them, that, not all of them, you understand. But on, on the whole, uh, doing the, uh, I'm not, I won't, there was maybe two teachers that, I don't know how they got out of high school, but, <laughs> but uh, other than that, uh, we had Good teachers who cared about the students, who 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 who, who were concerned and, and 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 so forth and so on. Everything we did. What was that principal's name? His his name was Scipio Booker Talaferra Easterly. Scipio. Say it. Let me see if I can say it again. Scipio. S or the Scipio. You can spell Scipio. What did I say? Scipio, Scipio Talaferra, Booker T. Easterling. But now we never knew that. He was he was S. B. T. Easterling. And there were two reasons for he never gave us his first names. One was he didn't want any students calling him by his first name. Number two, and I may have it backwards is, 
he didn't want the white folk that he had to deal with <laughs> calling him by his first name. You know, he was the he was the principal of the school, and we looked up to him and called him Mr. Easterly. Right? We didn't know what his first name was. His first names were, and the people in town didn't know what his first names were. And uh, I, I know that is true uh, because he and I had some talks uh, after I graduated about why he did various things and how they were that, that, that we, he didn't talk to the students about and everything. But he was, he was, he was gung-ho. Uh, and uh, I, 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 I remember one day, I, I'm trying to think it's, what he uh, what he, he was saying to me something that I I couldn't do. He said, "Don't ever say that. Don't ever say you can't do something." He said, "You can do it." And that was his philosophy. You know, you can do it. Don't don't tell me you can't do this. You can't do that. Tell him what you can do, and then go do it. He said, "You may fail, but you can come back and keep going." And uh, so he was the right principal. By the way, <laughs> a little background. <laughs> the, uh, uh, I've forgotten the details, but the reason uh, he was there was that the previous principal was, was not, I don't know how to say it, but uh, he, he wasn't very good. And, uh, and the students kind of ran over him, and, uh, but they didn't run over Mr. Eastley. Um, I knew he went, and uh, I, I knew that uh, I knew that he, I knew that he still had some coat. In other words, he was had some relationship with with that, and and sent students, some students there too, uh, Shaw University, and uh, and helped. One, another thing that he did was to help uh, find ways for the better students to be able to go to college when they didn't have the money. Now, I don't know, you know, I, 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 well, I know that he talked to people who he thought would help them and get them scholarships and various things, uh, things like that. And, of course, he always talked about Shaw University. Well, his wife. Mrs. Easterly was my favorite. Uh, she, uh, she was the advisor for the senior class. And uh, you could go to her and uh, ask for things. And uh, I won't go through the details, but three or four of us one night were at the school uh, for something, basketball after or something and everything. And we had an eraser, an eraser fight. <laughs> we, it was a fun thing. And the next morning, the people came in, and of course, the, we we hadn't we didn't straighten it up, straighten things up. And Mr. Easterling uh, called us in and said, uh, "My my the cream of my crop has let me down." And well, at any rate, that was that was that was very touching. And and the other one was that <laughs> three or four of us uh, seniors uh, dressed up one day and, and instead of going to school, or we may have gone to school and then left and went to another city and went to another school and everything and and uh, just, I don't know, you know. And uh, we, we didn't do any damage or anything, but uh, uh, the, somebody from that school was talking to her about some, uh, these guys dressed up, you know, and, and they were here. I, I'm surprised that you let them 
you know, out of school for that. <laughs> of course, she didn't, she didn't know, she, she didn't know anything about it, you know. And uh, she, she was, she was hurt about that. And uh, at any rate, I won't go into all of it. But when you say dressed up, what do you mean? I mean, we put on, I don't know whether we're, but I think we had put on just suits and ties and, you know, looking like we might have been, uh, you know, uh, some important people or something. But, but we went to this school up here and met with some folks and, and didn't have any better sense than, than to go in and talk to the, either one of the teachers of the school or something. And, of course, they called the Mrs. Easterling and talked to her. But it, it was just, you know, we were, we were boys. And, but we didn't do anything damaging, you know, but we just, sometimes young folk do things that uh, they want to do. I also saw that um, you spoke about having fun with keeping the fires going for the tobacco barn. Oh, Tell yes. Tell me about that. Yes. Well, the, uh, in, in, in the process of, of tobacco, uh, uh, you, you have tobacco bonds, uh, then uh, I don't know what they do now, uh, and and you would have you would have the, fo the, f the fire all night long for sometimes two or three I've forgotten how many nights to cure the tobacco and everything with it, and uh, that was uh, something that uh, we young folks enjoyed uh, being able to do, and uh, we would. To go and, and 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 stay up all night long. Now, of course, there was sometime we would go to sleep and sleep in a half hour or something and everything with it. But uh, it was it was an experience that I had that uh, was different from almost anything anything else. And we'd have to look at we have to go in the barn and look at the the tobacco and and also look at the temperature to be sure it's right and things like that that was it's kind of old time you know but uh, we we got several of us had a lot of fun uh, at night uh, doing that and pleasant memories I think the, the 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 best thing that I remember was that when we were out working together white and black uh, we would we treated each other the same, you know. And uh, but on the weekend, it just there was no absolutely nothing. You, you, they they would hardly the white ones if we ran across them over the on Saturday would barely speak to us because well I won't say because. Uh, and uh, I thought that was a very interesting, interesting. Uh, well, I, I think, uh, and this is just my thought, I think that a, a lot of the white parents taught their children that you are better than blacks. So don't, don't uh, you know, you, you're better than they are, so. You, you don't want to be seen out in town talking and chatting and laughing and talking with them. Uh, and and, and I, I know that because I have seen a lot of it, everything with it. Uh, and uh, so, and I understand it uh, because uh, when your parents say that you this, they are that. You, you, you may agree with it or not, but you, <laughs> you better not go too far against it. So, uh, that was one of the things that that I noticed. Uh, it wasn't with all of them. Uh, some of them, uh, they, they were, I remember two or three families of, of of white persons whose home invited us. We would work in the fields, and they would bring us 
in at lunchtime and sit around the table, all of us together, and we all ate the same thing. But there were there were only two or three of those who 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 did that. With as far as I know, Mr. Fort was the uh, Ed Fort. Uh, Mr. Fort was the uh, agriculture teacher. That uh, uh, he was a black man uh, uh, at our school, and uh, he uh, thought that I was a pretty nice guy. <laughs> Let me just put it that way. And he sort of took me under his wings, and uh, he started bringing me to Greensboro for the uh, NFA. What is NFA? Uh, meetings, and uh, doing my as long as he lived, uh, he was always being sure that. Uh, that anything that came along that was good and he could help with it, he would he would tell me about it or he would take me to it. He brought me to Greensboro several times to meetings. Uh, uh, be, I've forgotten now, I think, before I got into high school, I guess. And uh, it's just he's just a person that uh, I thought was, he was an agricultural teacher, did I mention that clearly? Yeah, and it was a farmer somewhere. In those days, you had uh, the, the black farmers were farming organiza organization was New Farmers of America. The white organization was Future Farmers of America. And uh, for a long time, uh, the Future Farmers of America uh, for North Carolina met at state, uh, what was then state college in Raleigh, and the New Farmers of America met at a North Carolina A&T State University. And those were the days of uh, what I call separate and unequal. Uh, but they called them at that time separate and equal. But Mr. Fort uh, was a good friend of mine, uh, and uh, it, he, he was always checking with me to be sure that I wasn't going astray, let me put it that way. And I, 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 I think well of him, obviously, because he probably kept me out of trouble on a few, such as, on a few situations. Uh, but uh, it went beyond, I mean, they called it vocational training. If they had tried to give it some other fancy thing, uh, they would have had difficulty with getting it approved by the the how the, I'll just say by the powers that be, but uh, it while it was uh, it was more than just woodworking and things. It was working woodworking and all that type of thing, farming and so forth. But it was also uh, uh, one of the things that it was it was parliamentary procedure, and uh, I remember a book which I think I still have, that uh, uh, was, I've forgotten who it was by, but uh, it was related uh, to agriculture uh, in, in terms of getting printed and, and, uh, uh, and getting used by uh, African Americans especially. I had very little. But I know that some blacks did, uh, and uh, I, I know that uh, not only in Ellaby but even Rockingham, that there were just some things that, uh, for example, I I had uh, some women in particular uh, tell me that that they wouldn't let you try on a, a dress if you if you. If you try, if you try it on the dress, you bought the dress. <laughs> what I remember is that uh, we had a theater, and the whites sat downstairs, and the blacks had to counter take a uh, ele not an elevator, a, a steps. steps outside to go up and get into the up into the up into the area, and it was 
you know, so-called separate but equal, but it was separate and unequal. Let me give you a little interesting thing that the uh, background. Uh, my my daddy uh, was a good person at working at the sawmill, and the owner of the sawmill was the now was a relative of uh, somebody that my daddy knew very well. Uh, let's just put it that way. He was white. White, yeah, yeah. And uh, my daddy worked. As a, he ran the mill, okay. And uh, and to my daddy, uh, he was he was. <laughs> my daddy called him by his first name. Let me just put it. <laughs> Uh, I, I remember specifically uh, we were in Rockingham at one point in the courtroom, and I don't remember what was what was going on. And my daddy was trying to get uh, his uh, this the, the his his the son of his the guy that he had worked for, and, uh, and I remember calling him across the day, Elsa, Elsa, I got to talk with you. <laughs> And I thought to myself, uh, you know, it, it, it's, a, it's something that remained with me a long time because, you know, Ella, black folk didn't call white folk by their first name. But uh, to daddy, it didn't make any difference. And, and obviously, uh, nobody did anything about it and everything with it. And uh, for a while, there was uh, cotton gin in, in Elby. And, uh, Black folk would have to get in line behind the white folks. I mean, that everything was, was so-called separate and equal, uh, but actually separate and unequal. And just about everything that oh oh, at the post office, uh, I, 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 can, I can tell you about this one a little bit. What would happen is that uh, people would come t in the post office to get their mail and the black folk would stand aside until all the white people who were in there were served and then we, then we because I did it a few times myself then we would walk up to the uh, what do you call the office yeah to 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 get the mail and that was one of the things that I didn't like, you know. And it did change eventually. I would observed some things, some in person and some from other people, you know, listening to them complaining, uh, primarily African-American American people and so forth, uh, uh, that uh, it just wasn't right. That the whites were treated better, easier, uh, and, 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 and blacks, uh, and I didn't think that was right, and so that's the way that's the way it was. I actually, I saw an ad in the paper, Greensboro. I guess it was the, I think this was the Greensboro paper. At any rate, and uh, saying we will uh, interview people for this particular uh, job. And so I came to Greensboro and I mean I made a, I came to Greensboro, I, let me see, I think yeah I called and made a reservation, got a reservation to, to uh, be interviewed. And so I came in and uh, stood there for for a while, and, and the lady said, uh, well, you know, in effect, what do you want? <laughs> and I said, uh, I came to apply for the, this, this job. And uh, I don't remember the sequence, but before I left, I remember that, what, that I think somebody else came in 
and say, well, we're going to interview some colored people, but we're going to do that on Saturday. I had seen and heard about lawyers and that I think one of the persons, I think, I, I'm trying to be, be accurate on this, but at any rate, in essence, uh, at, uh, the role of lawyers were to lie people out of trouble. I think I heard that somewhere, you know. And so I didn't want to be a lawyer. <laughs> uh, and I, one of the things, there were several things that happened was that while I was in service, I met a guy, a lawyer, and he and I were just talking and everything. And I was asking him what he was doing during his free time. And he said, well, I'm teaching inmates how to, well, you know, their language, in other words, teaching English to, and, and, and I said, you a lawyer? I said, how much you get paid? He said, I do it for free. And, and that, and we went along into some long conversation and everything, but that's when I began to respect the legal profession. Here was a guy who was trying to help people for free and not charging for it. And and I ran later on into some other people who, some other lawyers uh, with the same thing. But it's amazing sometimes how you have an impression of a profession of people. Because I would, at that time, before that, I would never have <laughs> been going to law school. I, I drove down to the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, uh, and for the purpose of determining or at least uh, seeing whether I should apply for the, the, dental. the dental school, yes, because I, I had had a lot of respect, right, for a, a dentist and, and two dentists, really, in, in, North, in, in, in Greensboro and everything with it. And uh, they said that I needed two courses in some course. And if I took those two courses and made a decent grade, I could apply. And I think it was that I would be able to probably get in, not this year, but next year for that class. I came back to Greensboro and met with J. Kenneth Lee whom I had known, he was a black lawyer that I had known and who had been an advisor to me with very thing, several things. And by the way, who had, <laughs> had on more than one occasion signed a note so that I could borrow some money at the bank. Now, I mean, I'll throw that in because that's, that's how close that we, we, we were. And he said, you don't need to be no dentist, you need to be a lawyer. See, you like people, you like to help people, so you need to go to law school. So I got in my car, and I think Shirley and I together, if I remember correctly, and we went back to Chapel Hill. And this is when we went to the uh, law school. And I was sort of apology, apologizing for you know, for not having a legal background or anything like that. And, and uh, the dean or assistant dean, whoever he was, looked at my transcript and said, I think you would do well in law school. And the next day, I got a letter and a lot of information and application and all that stuff to, f to fill out uh, in order to consider going to, well, in order to apply uh, to go to law school. Talk to this lady, Shirley, uh, and uh, she 
What did she say? She would let me know or something. You know what you said? What did you? Did you accept when I first asked? Yes. Oh, oh I, I, there's something else where you I... You get it mixed up with my first date. Yeah, right, yeah. So you get old, you forget these things, you know, and how the order of things. Anyway, let me back up and just say that uh, Shirley, uh, who, was my, who <coughs> was going to be my wife later on, <laughs> uh, was able to set, uh, pin my balls uh, after my mother couldn't couldn't come for it because she was ill, I believe. I think that's right. Uh, well, at any rate, uh, I uh, we were in a class. To was it debate? Yeah, well, the debate that was one thing, and uh, she remembers that she beat me in the debate. I don't remember that. I, I, forget, I forget that. <laughs> but it, I think I think she's right. <laughs> but we talk about it. Uh, at any rate, uh, so, uh, but we, we were not boyfriends and girlfriends and everything at that time. But uh, at any rate, I don't know how much you, 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 you want to get in that. Uh, but uh, I did want to get to the ROTC ball. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everybody wants to get to the ROTC <laughs> ball. Uh, okay. All right, Jeez. but let me let me just the ROTC ball. Uh, it's, uh, it was at A and T, and uh, it was the thing of the year, I guess. And uh, I uh, was going to go. Uh, but before that, uh, I had uh, met a young lady uh, at uh, Bennett College who was, I think, somewhat related to me. I know it in some, in, in the, somewhere in the family. Uh, huh? That's the thing, right? <laughs> it is somewhere in the family. <laughs> oh, boy. And uh, she had uh, she had invited to I've forgotten how it would work, but anyway, the bottom line was uh, that uh, let me see what do we how do we do it? Now I've forgotten the details, but the bottom line was that uh, she was going to invite me to. She had invited you. To, you went to the junior senior prom. With yeah, she had invited me to the junior senior pro, uh, and uh, I was going to invite her to the to our OTC ball. I, you know, the, at any rate, that was the thing, and at that time, uh, Shirley and I were not close. Uh, we were, you know, <laughs> even though we were seeing each other yeah. even I, I don't know Let, let's don't let's don't get into details okay, of that she remembers one thing the the two of the girl that I had invited and uh, we walked right by her she was sitting here and I'm we were walking in and I said to myself what is she doing sitting up here <laughs> this time of night? Uh, and I, I, I think she told me later uh, that uh, she was supposed to uh, judge a debate and she wanted to see who this woman was that I was bringing to, <laughs> to, the, to the ball. Uh, and uh, I had had or um, did no, I had, yeah, I had explained to her that I had, uh, the two of us had agreed that she would invite me to uh, the ball in minute, I would invite her to this. And, uh, when the question came as to why I didn't invite her, I told her that I don't break promises. And I, so, not that I didn't like you, 
is that I had promised to go in and, and I couldn't come in there walking in there with two women <laughs> and on and on and on. Uh, so, and I, I don't know why I even didn't tell this, but I don't know where exactly where it was. I was coming back from, I'd been in service o overseas, you know, and they came back. And instead of flying home, I, 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 I took a, about a week, I guess, to come home, and I stopped at various cities and things. And, and, and that Sunday, I went to a church. And, uh, and I, I hate to tell this, but I tell you, I'm not going to give the name or anything else. But I was sitting in the church, and they had a little banister like this, and I, I had, had my hand on this banister. And this uh, uh, usher comes walking down the thing and reached over and touched me. I said, we don't put our arms on the uh, banner or whatever it is. And I just, I thought that was, uh, I just said, I'm, I'm sitting, I'm, I got my uniform on, you know. <laughs> And I, I don't know why I thought to myself, in the church, here's a person who's got on a military uniform, you know, and you want to tell him to take his hand down from the thing. And I, I, it just, it was a big, it, it, I never, I, it's one of those things I, I always remember. And that's the only church I've ever been to where I was treated with something like that, you know. Putting, to me, putting form above service, you know. Was this at Institutional Baptist? Uh, no, 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 no. And it, it wasn't in Greensboro. No, it wasn't. Yeah, it was a city that I stopped in. in I don't know now whether it's Chicago or one of, the, one of the big cities. Was it an African-American? Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, yes. And I got up early that morning. You know, I spent the night. I, I took took me a week, you know, to come. You know, I would stop at various places and so forth. And uh, and Sunday morning, I stopped. At, I think it was in somewhere in Tennessee, but I'm not sure. So, I don't, I don't want to remember. I mean, I don't want to remember which church it was. If I ever go back, I don't want to. I don't want to have to tell them. Where did we get married? We got married in, uh, what is it, West Virginia? No. Not West Virginia. Uh, we got married in Bethlehem Church here. Oh, oh I'm, th well, I'm switching about it. I, we, we get mixed, I'm getting okay. things mixed up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, uh, I, at, I, at her church. Uh, first, I thought maybe we ought to do it at my church, but, uh, <coughs> but, uh, but I consented to her her wishes and uh, her. And, and uh, by the way, uh, the minister is was uh, the minister presided of that the minister of that church. But for the wedding itself, I, I think I mentioned that I wanted my, my former friend, who's dead, Frederick Terry, uh, to to do it and. Shirley went along with that, and and the minister allowed him to do the actual putting us. No, he he presided and did some things, and then that's that's who I had for for a long time wanted, and he wanted to. Well, let me just yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and mention anything. Those were the days of separate and unequal, of course. You know, so you have to consider that and, and the thing with it. The, uh, I lived off the campus and, uh, at that time, and uh, the, uh, they were, they were, the, what did you call the organization? My class, that's right, wanted to have their dinner, big dinner. At, uh, some 
restaurant. I've forgotten. I don't even remember who it was now. And and uh, <laughs> they carefully and 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 almost squeakishly <laughs> asked me if I were going to be, you know, if I were coming to it. And uh, I wanted to know why. And uh, they told me why. Because the place they were going to have it would not accept blacks. And I kind of toyed with them for a while, and eventually I told them I wouldn't go. I, wouldn't, I hadn't planned to go anyway, so go ahead and have it wherever you want to have it. You know. But uh, Were you the only black in your class? Yes. Now, I, I say yes. Eventually, I was the only one. When I started, uh, there was a, uh, wait, let me see. There was a woman, huh? There was a woman. So I was the only one. There was one guy there who, at one point, was, uh, I don't know, anyway. At any rate, I was, I was the only one who finished the entire thing. But not for the whole term, baby. Oh, first year, okay, all right. And, and Walter Johnson and I, had, Walter T. Johnson and I, and I'll just tell you that we had an excellent law practice. We had people coming from other parts of town to look at our office to see how it was organized and things like that. And, and we got to represent, uh, I don't remember whether it was a city or some city organization or something that hired us to uh, do a, a pretty big job. What uh, was the name of your law practice? Oh, uh, it was it was first, let me see, was it first Fry and, it was, Fry and Johnson. was it Fry and Johnson first? Fry and Johnson, Johnson had been my, my, my student. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, anyway, Fry and Johnson, Fry Bobby and Johnson. No, Fry Johnson. Oh, Fry Johnson and Bobby, and then Fry Johnson. Fry, Fry. Barbie. Fry Johnson Barbie is your name. Yeah, then various other names. Uh -huh. uh, what was it like working with Walter Johnson? Tell me about him. Yeah, well, uh, Walter. Uh, was smart, first thing, he, he was, and uh, he had a lot of great ideas. Uh, but he, he, he kind of, I don't know, he started working with another, with another guy and, and on another business, and somehow they, they it didn't go well. And it just got into real, real problems. And but uh, Kenneth was, was helped me in a lot of in a lot of ways. Tell and me some of those ways. <laughs> How much you want to know? <laughs> Number one, uh, uh, he, he for a year, few, few years for me to borrow money without any. Uh, what do you call it? Interest? No, 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 without any um, property, you know, to put up or anything. Collateral, yeah, that was a, uh, he, he signed that for several years for me. He never hesitated. Uh, and and uh, so it, it kept me from having to worry about borrowing money, you know. And, and to, I won't go through this, but just say to one, to his credit, uh, who uh, somebody told me, said, you need, to, you need to prepare your resume and everything to fix it up so you don't have to come in here having Kenneth Lee Barton for <laughs> uh, signing your notes. He said, you, 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 you should be able to sign your own notes. And I did. So I've had several people who were very, this was a white guy, you know, a banker. Uh, but uh, I could, I don't remember the names of them, uh, I don't want to remember some of them. But uh, a lot of people who 
gave me good advice. And uh, when I followed it, <laughs> it worked, worked well. Well, I, 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 it was already set up, and, uh, uh, and, and Walter Johnson and I, had, Walter T. Johnson and I, and I'll just tell you that we had an excellent law practice. We had people coming from other parts of town to look at our office to see how it was organized and things like that. And, and we got to represent, uh, I don't remember whether it was a city or some city organization or something that hired us to uh, do a, a pretty big job. What uh, was the name of your law practice? Oh, uh, it, was, it was first, let me see, was it first Fry and, it was, Fry and Johnson. was it Fry and Johnson first? Fry and Johnson. Johnson had been my my, my student. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Anyway, Fry and Johnson, Fry Bobby and Johnson. No, Fry Johnson. Oh, Bobby. Fry Johnson and Bobby, and then Fry Johnson. Fry. Fry. Barbie. Fry Johnson Barbie Gervais. Yeah. Then various other names. Uh -huh. uh, what was it like working with Walter Johnson? Tell me about him. Yeah. Well. Uh, Walter uh, was smart. First thing, he, he was, and uh, he had a lot of great ideas. Uh, but he, he, he kind of, I don't know. He started working with another, with another guy. And, and on another business, and somehow they, they, it didn't go well, and it just got into real, real problems. And yeah, well, Shirley was in Greensboro, I was in Ellaby. So the date that we were going to get married, August twenty fifth, nineteen fifty six, I uh, decided I. Would well, I decided, of course, I'll just let it go that morning. But on the way to going, I decided to stop by to register to vote. Uh, in Richmond County, they only had voting dates, about three or four or something. And usually on, well, I had, it was on Saturday. And uh, so I said, I'll go by and register to vote and, and then go on to Greensboro for our wedding. And I went in there, and the guy started asking me questions to name certain, name so many states of the Union, and that, that one I re remember, and I don't, re I don't remember more than I don't like to think about it, to tell you the truth. And I said, what, why are you asking me all these questions? He said, it's right in the book. And he pulled this book off of under his drawer dead thing or whatever it was, and showed it to me where it said, you know, where those questions were in there. And I said, well, uh, and, uh, all I know is to be able to read or write. Uh, I'd read or write or read and write, I don't know, whatever it was that I still did. Uh, the en English language and, and, uh, and be of certain age. In other words, I gave him what I knew was all I needed to know to, to register the book. He said, if you don't answer these questions in this book, I, I'm not going to register the book. And we kind of went round and round and round and round. And so I said, well, I'm not going to try to answer He said, well, I'm not going to register you. So I left. And then as I got out there, I thought about it. And I said, what is he going to say when I go appeal? So I turned around and went back in. I said, now, you don't have any doubt that I'm a registered, I mean a registered, that I'm a resident of, you know, Ellaby. Because see, I'd been in Greensboro, New York, and all of that. He said, oh no, I know you, your father, Walter Fry, <laughs> and so forth and so on. And at any rate, I said, well, why won't you let me register the vote? He said, because you're not answering these questions. 
So I started again. I tried to get him to do it, but he wouldn't do it. So I left. Fred Terry, Frederick Terry, who was going to the minister and my close friend who was going to marry us that same day, went in after me and he got the same treatment. So both of them. So that's the story. I'm standing at the altar looking at her coming down the, down the aisle on her father's arms, okay? And when she, at whatever level in the thing, uh, she was, you stood beside me, didn't you? Yes, yeah, she was stood beside me. And I whispered to her that, you know, they wouldn't let me register the boat this morning. And she said, And she would say, she would say, yes. I said, speak up. And everybody heard it. <laughs> now that's surely saying everybody heard it. I don't know whether that's true or not. But I said it. And I said it, I guess, loud enough. I said it loud enough for her to care. He wanted, he, act like I didn't want nobody to know I was marrying him. He wanted everybody to know that I was proud. <laughs> <laughs> well, the first one is, don't go to bed angry with each other. That's, to me, that's the number one thing that I have told people. I said, if you got a problem with your spouse, don't go around talking to everybody else about your spouse. Talk to each other. And I said, don't ever go to bed and go to sleep with something on your mind that, with your spouse. I said, talk it out. Talk it out. I said, you may win, you may not win either side. I said, but talk it out. Don't go to sleep mad with each other. I said, now number two is, you're two people. You're different. If you're not different, you don't need to get married, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> you a person. This is a person. I said, something is going to be wrong sometime. Apologize and try to talk it out and, 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 and promise, you know, don't do it. I'll figure a way to do it. Or what can we do to, to, make, things, to make things better? And uh, I said, no. Uh, a lot of you have asked me about this 50-50, this, uh, this go halfway. I said, who knows what is halfway? I said, sometimes you have to give 100%. And that's my advice. And uh, I, hope that, I hope that it can work. And remember that neither one of you are perfect. Well, uh, I uh, I like being with her. That's number one, I, and I think she liked being with me. So every opportunity that when she she was away or I was away, uh, uh, we we if it was going to be a long time, we would try to find ways to to get together and work together and and so forth and so on. And so she was at Syracuse working on her master's degree, and I said. Oh, I, I believe I, I believe I like Syracuse. See if I can go get a degree. And so I got my master's degree. Uh, I forget, think that's what it was. What I got, yeah. Uh, and uh, we we had a good time together. Uh, we we could. And as I said, we 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 liked each other. You know, it helps to like somebody when you're married to them and got <laughs> and going to be you know, working out things together and so forth. Uh, if you don't like them, don't marry them. Who <laughs> down there that uh, I was all white, I guess, and uh, the 
this is when we were trying to open up the schools to both sides. And uh, I had, uh, well, I, I had gone so far as to prepare a, a uh, what did I prepare? I prepared a, uh, something to. Well, in case that you didn't have to do it. Yeah, I prepared for filing something that day. And, uh, to help De Deborah Barnes attend? Yeah, yeah, so she could attend. Uh, because it was close to her house and mine, ours. And uh, uh, unknown to me, uh, uh, who was it? There was somebody uh, had already uh, taken it on. Uh, well, it, it was what was filed in Dr. Block, Dr. Blunt's name, right? I'm sorry. I thought it was filed I, in Dr. Blunt's they, name. No, I think it. No, it they, wasn't. They, they, did, they just let them in. You didn't have to. Oh, anyway, whatever it was, I don't know. Yeah, I ran uh, in 1966, and uh, everywhere I went, people were telling me that they were going to vote for me. And when I talked to a lot of people after, they told me they did vote for me. And uh, uh, I was, I thought we were going to win. And, uh, but we, but we lost, and, and uh, you could, we could it would take a long, too much time to go through the analysis of of what you know why we lost. Uh, so and then they're doing that I don't think. But uh, then the next time, uh, well, I was appointed after that. Is that no? Darling. No, that's not right. No, I wasn't appointed then. Yeah, right. You were appointed to the U.S. Attorney's Office. In, in which year? 1962. Oh, no, that's way back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, okay. All these were... I know, yeah, it's together. Yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Now, I was actually an assistant United States Attorney, okay. not, not the attorney and everything with us. And uh, was that the night? The, the night that Pauline Foster spoke. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, the the newspaper, there was a newspaper article, or was it, or was it on TV, or what? No, she wants to know how you got to walk in that. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. There, 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 was, uh, there was something in there where people were saying, these were white folks, you know, that black folk were cooperating with the thing and that uh, and I don't know what all it said but at any rate uh, the bottom line is we had a meeting of the citizen Greensboro Citizens Association which is a black group uh, and we met and we decided to march in support of the whatever it was that night yeah, that night, but the support of what? What were young people marching with Jesse Jackson leading the Oh yeah, yeah, because yeah, they were they were uh, they were saying that the young people are here and the the older settled people, you know, kind of thing. They 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 not with this kind of thing, and we we had a meeting that night at uh, Bethel. Was no, it Bethel? It was at Trinity. Trinity, yeah, at Trinity. Yeah, okay. yeah. And she said we all ought to march tonight. Yeah. And mm -hmm. there we were. If they had done anything wrong, you would have been in the crowd, and you yeah. got to be. Yeah, I was in the U.S. And says, "What shall we do?" Uh huh. Anyway, that that was it. Yeah. Uh -huh. So it, that was a frightening experience for you both. Well, uh, I it, it wasn't. Frightening is that's just it's, it was, him, but, it but uh, the uh, well, one of the things was being a, in the U.S. Attorney's Office, I had some authority over uh, 
FBI agents and so forth, right? And, and here I am marching in the thing. And uh, when did you find? When did we find out? I found out later that. Uh, but Howard Covington was right the book. Yeah, that 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 the FBI knew that I was in the. They, your name was Herman Fry. Uh, they they wrote Herman Fry, but it was. It was me. <laughs> in other words, I, it was in a position where, you know, I'm I'm a part of the of the force, uh, the, the, you know, and I, but I said, uh, we said, well, let's go, we'll march anyhow. <laughs> but, um, anything else that you wanted to talk about real quick? The Bimbo Road, the architects. Your home. <laughs> I say that I'm, I'm just putting it, throwing it all out there. Well, uh, just for just for fun, Shirley said, "I told her, baby, baby, we can't afford this house." She said, "Well, we, we just let's get it, and we'll, we'll keep it about three years, and then we can, we, we'll, you know, we can sell it." And that about what did she say, baby? I plead the fifth. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? I said, "I plead the fifth." <laughs> <laughs> and Oh boy! At any rate, oh, uh, uh, we we. Who built your house? Who, uh, who was the architect? The architect was who? Was w. it Jenkins? W. w. Edward Jenkins, a black uh, guy who was top notch. Uh, he was actually an engineer, really, uh, and uh, but he'd done a lot of things, and he was good. He was good, and. We bought a house that we couldn't afford, but we, I think we had uh, two or three mortgages on it or something like that, but we were finally able to pay it off. <laughs>